Hi, my name is Sal. I'm the founder and formulator for the brand and products known as Root to Tip. Um, I started making products in, say, around 2007, just after my daughter was born. I suffered with hair loss and had a really bad dry scalp condition, and I wanted something natural to really help me grow my hair, and that's where it really all started for me. Around about the same time, though, I also uncovered loads of information on, on unhealthy hair care ingredients and in products which actually really um, started me off making products for my daughter because she was really young at the time and her hair was really thick, frizzy and dry. But a lot of the products I'd seen in my, in my local hair shop contain a lot of unsavory ingredients. So because I started writing about um, healthy hair care practices on my blog, I wanted, to, this, I wanted this information to reach a wider market. And my whole thing was trying to help people to love their hair as it was naturally. This is way before natural hair was even a trendy thing, but I just wanted to share the hair education, as I call it, knowledge that I had uncovered. So I wrote an article called Hormones in Hair Care in 2011, and I sent it over to Black Beauty and Hair magazine. I currently now write for them as a natural hair care expert, but this is way before I'd actually um, ever had any published work in the magazine. But I wanted them to, you know, sort of warn parents about the dangers of these hormones in hair care products because so many parents, as consumers often are, were just unaware. So my thing was, I'm gonna let people know, I've just found out myself, I need to let people know. So as a manufacturer, why am I so concerned? Recently, there's been a, there was a news report out that detailed the fact that 80% of the products marketed towards black women and made for us contained cancer-causing properties, um, loads of carcinogenic ingredients, um, also things that were making people infertile, um, linking to obesity, and loads of other um, internal disruptions within the body. It's really alarming for me as somebody who makes products and always wanted to make products that were clean but I think I have a responsibility as a manufacturer to let people, let the consumers know that what they should be looking for. Hair education is a big part of what we do. So not just, it's not just about hair to me, it's really about keeping our people informed so we stay healthy and strong, especially our young girls. I have a daughter who is um, 12, she's soon to be 13. And if I had been using a particular kind of products on her hair that contained all these different synthetic ingredients and chemicals for the past, say, 10 years, I'd be really concerned about what I'm putting into her body and what sort of surprises she may find as she grows up to be a woman. So the endocrine system is the system within the body that regulates glands, um, um, the flow of different things to, to the pituitary area, regulates thyroid. So anything disrupting that, in particular hormones, can lead to things like um, tumours, like cancerous, um, infertility in women and, and, and males, um, obesity too, and loads of different other um, ailments. Um, attention deficit disorder. So these are quite big, big, um, big things to be looking out for. And this is why you should be avoiding them if you can. So as a manufacturer, I want to explain to you as a consumer exactly what EDCs are. EDCs are known as endocrine disruptors, a group of chemicals that are used in personal care products, also in, in, in um, plastics and things, that basically um, have estrogen-like properties that disrupt the endocrine so what system are the things you should be body? looking out for on your labels when you're trying to avoid these EDC chemicals? Um, let's start with the top one, parabens. Widely used in, in vast ranging cosmetics, um, hair care products. They are basically a preservative product and they're used to extend the shelf life of the product you might buy. Why are they so bad for us? They mimic estrogen in the body and they disrupt the hormone levels in there as well, which, which often times can lead to cancer and tumors developing in the body. Siloxanes. Siloxanes are a large group of chemicals, namely belonging to the silicone family, and you find them in your in your hair creams, your hair lotions, your leave-in products, anything that has like a silky kind of plasticky feel, your hair polishes, your frizzy serums. Those kind of products contain siloxanes or siloxane family group products. So anything like amodimethicone, silicone, um, metal dimethicone, those kind of products you want to be avoiding on the label. Phthalates. Phthalates are um, actually banned for use in children's products in the, U in the USA. There was a 2008 bill that said that the use of phthalates in kids' products were actually banned in the US. It may be similar in the UK as well. However, phthalates are linked to things like asthma, um, attention hyperactivity disorder in children, um, infertility in boys. They too should be avoided. What if you can't find these ingredients on your labels? Because sometimes FDA has actually ruled that phthalates and parabens are not harmful substances. So that means that if you're buying any product from the US, these things are not even going to be on your ingredients label. So that means you're putting yourself at risk 
for the sake of hair care. As a natural hair care manufacturer, I think I have a social responsibility to ensure that any product I produce for my consumers and place onto the retail market is clean, ethically sourced, and not going to cause any, any long-term health or disruption in the body of anybody who uses it. I can speak for myself, but I can't speak for other brands. What the consumers now have to do, you're now armed with the knowledge, is seek out brands you can connect with. Try and find out who the brand owners are. What's their mission? What's their objective? Are they just after your money in your purse? Or are they really trying to make sure you have healthy, happy hair? So, you know, if you walk into your local hair shop, a lot of the products you're going to see, when there's so many products on the shelves anyway, a lot of the products you're going to find that are made in the US do not even have to list the fact they're using phthalates or parabens. And that's what you have to be careful of. You want to really try and read between the lines. I think most brands nowadays, they really want to just be highlight the fact we have no silicones, no mineral oil, no petroleum. Yeah. I and mean, you highlight that, but the brands that shout that loud also, you have to be careful because they're often yeah. hiding on the back things like MIT. So with this product yeah. here, uh, you have MIT in there. Yeah. This ingredient right here, the MIT. Yeah. Methylisothiazolinone. That is an um, short for MIT, well, MIT for short. Sure. Because I would bet it's a look, if you look on the back. Link this. to lung toxicity. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I've already seen it again. Sulfate and paraben, paraben free, free, no mineral, mineral oil. Or yeah. So I'm not even reading anymore because I'm that's thinking it. that's perfect. Absolutely. That's it's not got the bad stuff. And that's so all you really it need. It must have the good stuff. <laughs> but that's, that's what, what I, I, I assume people I know assume the same. Yeah. Some people don't even read it. That's the thing. They just pick <laughs> up. Know the they just see the picture of the child in the front and think, yeah. okay, that's yeah. what I need for my child. Oh, 100%. she's like that. Oh, I'm grabbing that yeah. without reading the back. But yeah. because these products are made for kids, we have to really do our homework now. No, the studies have been shown that they're definitely. disrupting bodies and all sorts of things. So it really is. And, and like this I said, is the pink one. You don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. It's hard. It's absolutely hard. You don't actually know what you're looking for. It's really difficult because in here you've got a lot of um, of these siloxane um, family synthetic chemicals in here in the form of dimethicone, amodimethicone, things that make the hair feel or the conditioner feel slippery. Okay. But we can achieve that with natural ingredients as well. So basically, another thing to point out to you guys is when you're looking for your labels, see how many ingredients are listed on a conditioner. It tends to be a less is more approach. So I think that on, this is our natural conditioner and it's got this maybe, I don't know, one, two, of eight, and then maybe 15 ingredients in there. Not even that, less than that, actually. But this is a not so natural one. And you can see from here to here, the difference. It's got probably yeah. twice, if not more, the amount of ingredients in there. Half of them you can't even pronounce. And that's the kind of thing you should be looking for. And especially if you can't pronounce it, do not put it anywhere near your children. Okay. You know, really don't put it anywhere near your children. Another brand, a popular it's brand. Silly, but I assume that there's certain things that would be on your thing that I wouldn't be able to pronounce. But because it's... Yeah. There absolutely is. There absolutely is, but we but only bec because it's like a uh, what do you call it? Like a concoction of yeah, you know, different ingredients and stuff. I'm assuming that okay, that that should be okay, or it means something else. Yeah, have you ever seen that? It's a long yeah, word, it's a long words. Like, oh, that was like well, I don't it, know, it is because it you is. have like you have, exactly good point. You have the Latin name for things. Yeah, then you have the chemical name. So if you see something like alo, alo um, on here, you have is aloe barbendus leaf juice, or we have on here for shea butter, it's bacteria sperm. Um, Parky, that means shea butter. That's okay, Latin see? for shea butter. Wow. Whereas if you see methyl or methyl or whatever, whatever, that's more of a chemical, a paraben. Okay. That's the key thing. So you have to be careful of not confusing the Latin name for the ingredients okay. with the parabens and ingredients okay. and phthalates should, should be avoiding. But unless there's more is generally the approach. I'm not saying every ingredient that has, every product that has a long list of ingredients is going to be negative. No, but, but in general, across the board, so yeah. Much. Especially things you can't really pronounce. No, that's, yeah, the, that's the main thing, really. Things that you can't really pronounce. We looked at three different brands, and across the board, um, these brands are all marketed towards children, and they all contain ingredients I would not put on my child, um, mm. namely MIT or some kind of siloxane group, um, silicone type chemical, which are linked to all different things. So EDCs are basically in tons of products mm. still out now in the market today. So you really have to do your homework. Um, really have to do your homework. And I think just a little bit of education and people are willing to try something different. Yeah. If they can get the same result using a natural product, I'd be all for it. Even if you have to pay a little bit more, I think it's really, 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 really beneficial to do so. But um, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do, basically. <laughs> so I mentioned earlier about looking for, look at what sort of products should we be looking out for specifically. Now we're talking about adult products. Anything clear, any kind of hair polisher, any kind of hair serum is basically a siloxane belongs to the siloxane family and it basically is silicones and dimethicones and these are endocrine disruptors. We need to be avoiding these these things and look for another way to to 
shield your hair from the heat. So you can use grape seed oil, for example, or try and find a heat protectant that hasn't got just, which isn't just clear. I mean, the fact that it's clear is, um, is, a, is should be an alarm bell. This one here has been out on for a long time. It's a popular brand. And basically I've spotted at least six or seven endocrine disruptor type synthetic chemicals in there. And people are putting that directly on their scalps. So if you've been using this for years, you know, you don't know what you're doing to yourself. You don't know whether you're giving yourself a cancer, whether you're assisting yourself in having fibroids. Be careful, people, please. This is like, this is really serious. Really serious. Okay, so olive oil presenter. Uh, marketed as a lotion, presenter in olive oil. But if you read the ingredients, it's aqua, um, methoxypropanol, PVP, ethyl oxidant, glycol olive oil leaves extract peg 40 um, and then it's it's actually preserved with MIT so basically in this little glass vial is EDCs in a bottle all for 99p I don't need to say anymore but this here is an oil it's an oil let's see what's in there yeah it's an oil BHT. but it contains BHT which is um a plastic resin right at the back right at the, right at the end you've got BHT in there so why do you want to have BHT in your oil for me an oil should just be oil. should just be oil it, should it shouldn't oil. contain any BHT um, and propylene glycol glycol is another thing you want to be avoiding propylene glycol you need to be avoiding that and oil and that? should just be an oil <laughs> propylene glycol I can't recall but it's linked to um, it's it's linked. It's like a, a byproduct of something else. It's not a synthetic, okay. and they're and they're marketing this as um, Repair Seven Oil Elixir. Okay, that's why your hair is not going to feel completely moisturised by it. Uh, there's another oil here, anti-breakage, which you've never known. Oil as a spray. Again, it contains um, trimethicone, BHT, um, cyclohexene carbon oxidide it contains a lot of ingredients I wouldn't pour and even methyl soyate I wouldn't pour near my scalp because it contains endocrine disruptors and you've got things like your hair your hair spritz and hair spritz and things as well okay methyl propylene so I think this also contains parabens too you know, these things have to be, you have to be careful of because you can spray them in, you spray it on your hair, you also spray it in there and you're also inhaling that. That's going right into your system. If you're someone who's using it all the time, you need to be careful, you need to be aware because these things are not really affecting us right now. You might not see the, the results of what you're using right now, but when you're like 40s, 50s and developing fibroids or, um, you know, cancer or you get endometriosis, that's when you start to question, how did I get this? What happened? Yeah. What have I done wrong? Absolutely, that are marketed towards us. Yeah, the spray, just, just trying to look beautiful and maintain our hair. It could be actually causing us a real disservice and real harm. So it's, 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 it's quite a lot I can show you guys, but it's for you guys now to go home and do your own homework and find out and think about what you're using. Look out for certain ingredients. If you can't pronounce it, don't use it. I would suggest and say, I'm not saying you have to buy my brand, you just have to look for yourself. And as someone who manufactures products, I think it's really important that we become more knowledgeable, you know, and as I say, awoke. Mm -hmm. We need to be awoke on every facet of life, especially when it comes to our children. That's really, really critical.